Um, yeah, really good. Obviously, uh, it's uh, it's been a little while now, but um, yeah, look, delighted to be here. Um, looking forward to the massive challenge ahead, uh, which uh, I was well aware of before taking on the responsibility, and uh, looking forward to uh, working with the players and the staff, and um, you know, being part of a a, a really uh, strong competition. You know, look, it's fair to say every sort of position I've had um, has kind of needed some sort of rebuild. And um, as you said, I had a, had a brilliant two years at uh, Celtic. Uh, loved every minute of it, but it was challenging, particularly at the start. And um, yeah, I, don't, I don't know if it's about patience. I mean, you can't ask people to feel a certain way or to, to sort of dampen expectations. I think what I've tried to do wherever I've been, and including Celtic, is allow them to form their own opinion with what they see rather than what I say. And, um, you know, like, so we had a massive rebuild at Celtic, but I think, you know, at the beginning, even though the results weren't there, the supporters could see what we were trying to do and got behind us. And, you know, um, I don't know whether that's it's going to be a rocky star for us or a good star for us, but either way, my, you know, my hope and my desire and what I'm going to try and do is give our supporters hope and, and belief that we're, um, you know, we're going to embark on something special. So it's question three, and it was Harry, was it? Okay, uh, we're, we're running a pool with the coaches. I think, uh, I think Millay Yednak won actually. I had I had over six because I thought you'd care more about me than than Harry. <laughs> but um, no, look, I, I think in terms of the squad, um, as I said, there is. It's fair to say I think the reason that I'm here is because you know the club is seeking change. You know, um, change in, in direction, change in you know the way we do things, and and that usually transpires in the change in personnel, squad and players and staff. And, you know, within that context, my my role right at this minute is to deal with what's in front of me, the certainties I have, uh, knowing that there are going to be many uncertainties and um, trying to tick off one by one, um, you know, the path forward for us. And that is, you know, what our squad's going to look like. Um, it may take a little while um, until the season starts before we have a clarity on that. But within that, I can't wait for that moment to start working. We've started already. Thank you, brother. Becky. I can't say it was it was it was a goal. I've I've you know I've I've come literally from the other side of the world, so it's kind of been just I've just wanted to experience as much as I can through my, throughout my career and see where that takes me. And um, you know, every challenge I've had is you know I've I've enjoyed, I've embraced wherever I've worked, whether that's in you know, different countries, different leagues, um, national team or, or club football. Um, but you know, the, the Premier League is is the, the the strongest competition, as you said. Um, you know, some of the best managers in the world are in this competition. Some of the strongest teams in the world are in this competition. And why wouldn't you want to embrace that? And um, yeah, it's another you know, opportunity for me to to do what I do. Um, you know, in a different competition with um, you know different sort of fundamentals around it, and you know, experience something else in my career that uh, you know I, I hadn't. Like I said, I w it wasn't an ambition of mine, but certainly, um, you know, everything I've done, I've tried to do to the best of my ability so that it gives me more experiences that I can say, um, you know, have given me a career that, uh, you know, realised everything I've wanted to do. No, no on both, because I think going in with sort of preconceived ideas might be limiting as is making goals. I think, um, again, from the outset, what's important is that we try and establish some sort of key principles of who we want to be, first of all. Um, and not just in the way we play, the way we behave, the way we train, uh, the way we interact with one another, the way that we interact with everyone else, and, and then see where that takes us. Um, because, um, you know, 
goals are great, but they can also, you know, sort of stifle you a little bit because you become a bit narrow. And the reality of it is we're going to have to do things and be fairly flexible along the way to adjust to whatever challenge there may be ahead of us. And we don't know what they are, you know. Sometimes you, with all the best planning and um, sort of trying to have foresight and these kind of things, um, things come across your path and we've got to be agile enough to, to adjust to that and, as I said, see where that takes us. But, you know, we're a big club and um, the end goal for all big clubs is to have success and that's what we want to try and do. Yeah. It's a good start. Yeah, good day. Yeah. How are you, mate? Um, it's how much of a step up from next year? <coughs> I don't know about step-ups. I mean, I had the same question when I got to the SPL, but I've coached at a World Cup, so I've coached at... You know, um, in different leagues. I think every challenge is the same, to be honest, because it's relative to the competition you're in. So, you know, I've never, I've never gone into any job thinking, oh, this is going to be easy. Uh, in comparison to anything else I've done, is this going to be a massive challenge? Absolutely. But, you know, Celtic was a massive challenge. I mean, I know people sort of say that, you know, in Scotland, you, you know, if you're Celtic, you can finish. You know, you're either going to finish first or second, but second is last. Second, I'm not in the job. Um, so you have to finish first. So you know, it's irrespective of kind of what outside thoughts are, there's still a demand there. And it's not just about winning, it's a manner in which you win as well. You know, there's an expectation around your way you play your football, particularly you know, for me, who you know, I'm pretty explicit in saying I want my teams to play a certain way. So that has to be reflective of how we do things. So I don't, I've, I've never seen anything I've done as a step up. I just see it as, as a different challenge, you know, a different set of circumstances. Because with every... You know, what other people perceive as a step up in level, you're working with also better players and you know, a bigger organisation, more resources. So all those kind of things are relative. So I, I don't dismiss any success at any level for anybody in life, you know, because as I said, um, I guarantee you even the lowest levels of what we perceive, whether that's football or life, somebody is grafting to be successful against the relative competition. So I've, you know, I've never seen it as a step up. I just see it as a new challenge for me. Is that conversation you finding out from him whether what he wants in terms of strength now and beyond this season, or is it for you to convince him of what you can offer in terms of where he does want to play, or bit of both? Yeah, I, I just think you know I I don't think it's my role to you know sit there and and sort of treat people in a manner because of their circumstances. I, I, I'm really big on just treating everyone the same. And Harry is, and f you know, he's, he's already entrenched himself in the history of this football club. He's a very important part. He's the premier striker, one of the premier strikers in the world. And, you know, I want him involved here. My conversation with, with him will be about how we can make this club successful. And I've got no doubt that that's, he, that's what he wants as well. Um, so, you know, within that context, whatever sort of um, that... Uh, narrows into you know the personal stuff around Harry himself as an individual. If the conversation takes it that way, we'll, we'll take it that way. But I, I doubt it's going to be, you know, defining in the manner that I think people think it's going to be. It's not going to be a conversation where, you know, we walk out of that room, we've got sort of an understanding because I don't want that kind of conversation. What I want is to introduce myself to Harry to give him a sort of vision for the football club to get an understanding from him of what he thinks this football club needs to be successful and we go on that training pitch and trying to make it happen and final one for me I mean I presume it, it stays with your captain this season what's happened with Hugo Lloris and, and some other men <coughs> senior players that we understand or the left who might be moving in passing this summer yeah, as I said I mean even even that you know sort of around the, the captaincy and that I'm just it's not it's not at the forefront of, of my mind right now what's at the forefront of my mind is trying to establish you know the direction we're going to go as a football club and and trying to be as clear to people about that about me and all these kind of things because if I start thinking about that kind of detail right now I'm going to miss you know the opportunity to really establish some of the like I said fundamentals of, of what I want us to be and in terms of the squad, look, you know, we're we're in that stage like most clubs where you kind of know that there will be there will be activity between now and, and you know the start of the season, the end of the window, um, and 
there will be some players who won't be here and other players who will come in. Um, again, in my mind, I try and treat that with the understanding that until something's certain, I'm not going to commit myself either way to you know, whether a player's going to be here or not because, again, no point wasting energy on something that may or may not happen. So, um, you know, so far the, the lads we've had in have been excellent. Um, the way they've approached things, the, the staff have been brilliant in, in sort of adapting and, and implementing the things I want and, you know, we'll, we'll keep moving along. We'll get most, well, all, all the rest of the sort of group back in the next couple of days, so it'll be great to see everyone in the building. Thank you, mate. Thank you, I've never taken social media as a barometer of me as a person. I, I'd hate to think anyone does because, you know, there's more to life than uh, who we are. Um, you know, unless you've actually polled every single Tottenham supporter around the world and you've come out with a defining majority that don't want me here, I'd suggest that, you know, what social media, what comes out of social media. Look, I, I think supporters with every appointment have their right to reserve their judgment. Absolutely, why not? because this is their football club and everyone who comes through their, you know, their football club, you know, they have a right to determine whether they think it's the right person or not. And I think for the most part, I'm pretty sure the majority, the overwhelming majority of Tottenham supporters want me to be successful because if I'm successful, it means their club's successful and I think they'll wait and see and, and reserve judgment on, on, on me when that comes. But it doesn't affect me. I mean, it's not like you know, I feel like I'm battling against any tide or anything. Uh, to be honest, I've felt overwhelming support since I've been here. I, you know, the people I've come across, you know, outside of here have all been very supportive in terms of, you know, Tottenham fans. So, you know, rather than sort of troll through uh, social media to find, uh, you know, what's said about me, I'll, I'll go on the feeling I have at the moment. No, I haven't had any assurances and I wouldn't expect any assurances because, again, you know, with these kind of things, you're never dealing in definites or, you know, in, in certainties in anything in life. So, and I've never, again, you know, it's just my nature that I kind of go along and, and try and concentrate on the things that I know right now. And what I know right now is that, you know, Harry's part of this squad and, you know, he's looking forward to coming back to training and getting amongst the players and back in here and we start working together and... Again, if if I spend too much time worrying about the impact that it may have either way, I'm going to miss trying to build a team because ultimately that's what's going to make us successful. If we build a team that plays football a certain way, that's that's going to be. And I'm I'm not going to, you know, sort of miss this initial opportunity to lay down what I know is going to be important in the long term. What's going to be important in the long term goes beyond individuals. It, it's more about overriding sort of philosophy on, you know, who we want to be as a team and, and the key people within that. Ali? Yeah, um, so to start with a bit of a personal one, I just wondered, over the years, you've said that you've been to football clubs to kind of make your dad proud in the way you play football, but you've also said that it was quite difficult at times to see your dad. I just wondered what you would have made of him now on the way you've got more friends and family. Yeah, look, it, of course, he'd be overwhelmingly proud, but you know, he'd be making sure that I was successful. And uh, yeah, look, I've, I've spoken about you know my dad a lot, and it's only as you get older and you know, um, you kind of realise the impact um, that your upbringing has on you. You know, you become a parent yourself, and you kind of experience different things, and you know, certain things rattle around in your head that maybe as a child you're kind of dismissed, but you know. You know, he had, a, he had a dream for his son and, um, you know, I think um, in his mind, um, provided I I did what he said, I was going to reach that, you know, and, uh, and sometimes I wasn't really happy with that, you know, I, I wanted to do my own way and, and, and I've charred my own path in, in many ways, but, um, 
you know, it's not just, just for my dad, my mum, my family, all the people who make sacrifices. It's not just for me. Anyone who's kind of reaches a, a certain level in their profession knows that uh, they've done it on the back of, you know, as much as your own sacrifice, other people's sacrifices. And, and you kind of hope they, and you, you, you want them to take pride in the fact that, you know, you wouldn't be sitting here today without um, their support. And, 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 you know, like I said, in my parents' case, the, the sacrifices they make. Yeah, Tangy's been good. He's, uh, you know, he's he's working hard at training. Um, but to be fair, they all are. They've, they've got no option. Um, so, you know, um, and um, again, you know, I, I take things as I see them. And 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 for me, you know, he's, he's obviously a very talented footballer. He, you know, he was part of a team that, that won the Serie A last year. So, um, and within that context, you know, I'm I'm pleased to have him here and, and part of the group. Um, what that means long term, um, again, I'm not going to get into the definites of that because a lot of that will depend on sort of how the team shape up, how he shapes up. He may decide this is not for him. I'm not sure. It goes for any player. But um, like I said, the group we've had in so far have been have been really good in just embracing the sort of the change of direction and the way we're doing things. And you know, as I said, once we get all the other guys in, it'll be great to see how everyone measures up and you know the decisions will be made. You know moving forward from there as to who's kind of going to be involved and who won't. Last question, Obviously, there's going to be some players that maybe don't go on the tour for a variety of reasons. Are there any that can't go or are doubts just too too limited? Um, not at the moment. We, we do have a couple um, who, obviously, um, Rodrigo Bendico has obviously uh, got his injury. He's still a little bit off. Um, Fraser Foster's got a bit of a, a back injury, which... Um, Probably means he won't travel because he's he won't be able to participate. Um, there's a couple of others who are kind of touch and go at the moment. We'll just see how they go in the next few days. It's about taking guys. I mean, it, for me, it's it's you know, I'd really like as many of the group along as possible because it's the best way to figure out you know how we we set up our environment and 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 sort of the culture around the group if everyone's there. Um, but if it's going to be beneficial for some guys to stay back, we'll make that decision. I I don't think there'll be too many that be in that sort of boat at this stage. George. Um, I, I guess without again, sort of having a too defined an approach to that is I think anyone who kind of charted the course of my career will know that if you watch my teams play, we. They all have the same sort of basic elements in there, and that is, you know, we want to be aggressive. Um, you know, we want to take the game of the opposition. We want to try to win every game of football, which I guess is not unique. Everyone wants to do that. It's just the manner in which we go about it and we will go about it is that we want to be a team that tries to dominate games of football. Now, what that's going to look like, you know, you know obviously my history is a bit of a predictor to that. Um, and I've been pretty consistent in playing that way, wherever, whichever level I've been at. You know, whether that's domestically, international level, or in different countries or different competitions. So, um, everyone all right? Yeah. <laughs> um, so, you know, what this Tottenham team is going to look like? Again, I don't want to limit that because I'm using different players here, some fantastic footballers. It could be something brand new that even I haven't put together before hopefully it's successful but the elements of it will be that we'll you know we want to be an aggressive team a dominant team a team that takes the game to every opposition home and away I think for me the history of this football club kind of suggests that that's the best fit for it but you know having said that that doesn't mean it's the only way you can have success but that's the way we'll be trying to do it Yeah, it was a it was a tough look. It's a, it's a special football club, and it's it's you know if you've got a, a bucket list as a manager of football clubs, you probably want to manage. That's probably one of them because um, the supporters are uh, and, and you know just uh, you know, as I said, they're not really supporters. They you know the, the club is an extension of them as a family, and uh, we had a brilliant two years. Um, a great group of players, great staff. You know, we had 
some fantastic success and some great moments within that and, um, you know, I'll cherish them. But, you know, I'm the kind of guy who always loves a challenge. I love a build. I love a rebuild. That's where I kind of... I feel I'm at my best and um, you know, this challenge when it came along I just thought it had all the elements of what I need to to get going again and um, you know I, would, I know you know Celtic have appointed Brendan Rogers who's an outstanding manager they'll continue to have success they've got great players there they've got you know great infrastructure and like I said it's a great football club it's uh, I was very fortunate to to be allowed that responsibility for a couple of years and and now my goal is to try and make some special moments here and create something special for this uh, great football club as well. You know, I don't know if I've said I'll take time. I think other people have said that because it has wherever I've been and it's varied sometimes, you know, it's taken longer than other clubs, you know. And, and again, I, don't, I can't, you know, we might start the season flying, I hope so. I don't want to any time, you know, but you just don't know and it will be how the players adapt to it and how, the, it's not just the way we play, like I said, the way we train, the way we behave, the way we talk. Um, I've got um, really good coaching staff together, which I'm really happy with, um, you know, they're working, you know, they've already started working really well together as a unit, you know, well, to be fair, I wasn't really aware of it, but when I was sort of touted to this job, it became evident that people think I'm old, so I tried... I tried to get uh, as many young guys around me as I possibly can just to keep me relevant. Um, so, um, and I, I'm really happy because, you know, those guys, there's there's a combination of guys who you know this football club really well. Um, some others who are really ambitious coaches and I love working with people like that, you know. I'm sure some of them one day will be, you know, managers in their own right. But, you know, right now they're putting all their energies to trying to make us successful and I think... It's great for the players because when they walk into training and, and into this building every day, um, there's a real good energy and that's going to be important for me. That's going to help me sort of transfer that message, you know, hopefully as quickly as possible. Because the, re the reality of it is that the Premier League is the toughest competition in the world and you don't really get time to sort of bet in. You know, from the first game, you know, we're going to have to be on it and we're going to try and do our best in the next sort of five, six weeks to, to be prepared for that. George. OK, we've got Charlie and then finish with Roman, please. Um, yeah, I, ignorance is bliss. I, I don't know if that'll work in this uh, in this kind of role. I think you, you try and sort of understand as much as you can, you know, what you're walking into. But what I've found wherever I've gone, and, uh, you know, like I said, I've been fortunate enough with, with kind of my coaching journey that I've, you know, I've experienced many, many different things and I've learned to understand that no two places are the same and and, and you cannot try and then fit one mould into everybody and every organisation and every sort of group you have and you know I've always found it's better for me to walk into a place and kind of get a feel for it myself and see how that sort of affects my thinking and my decision making rather than come in with a fixed mindset of saying because you do obviously whenever you get a new role there isn't a shortage of opinion on you know what's right and what's wrong and, and what needs to be fixed but you know all those things are my responsibility and I always feel it's better I get a feel for it because, you know, you, you can't judge other people and, and what they say and what they do because until you, you walk in their shoes. So for me to sort of look at sort of whether that's Antonio or any other manager who's 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 been in this position and, and try and judge their actions on the way I would sort of react to something is wrong because I'm not there, you know. The same way I wouldn't like it if anyone kind of was... You know, judging my performances on what I said uh, without understanding the full context. So, you know, I, I walked into this role understanding the challenge that's before me and and looking forward to sort of embracing it my way, you know, doing things my way and, and, and not sort of being bogged down by too much of the historical context of that. Um, I don't know if anything surprised me, but I think yeah, I've... I just enjoy taking in, you know, 
every new environment and the people that are within it and, and trying to sort of understand, like I said, how that will affect me and what I want to do. That's so, um, you know, so far, you know, everyone's been, you know, as you'd expect, everyone's welcoming because they all want to sort of be part of it. So you don't expect to walk in and, and not be welcome, but everyone has been very welcoming. And, and I think more importantly, you know, everyone's been open-minded about the way we want to do things and, and hoping to, to get some direction from me, which is great because that's what I, you know, that's what I'm here to do. Um, but, you know, you see the, you know, the, the, the size of this football club and its fan base, um, you know, you kind of understand as an outsider, but when you're in it, you, you, find, you feel that sort of enormity and that responsibility even more so. Um, so from my point of view, it's just about, you know, trying to get in my head a real clear picture of the way forward. The quicker I got that sort of clarity in me, then the easier it will be for those people around me to understand what we're going to do next. Just just about that, just about being open-minded and, and sort of not being, you know, bogged down too much by expectation or, or you know, like I said, history. Um, just, just understand that we are going to, go down a different road, do things differently. Not because, you know, I think it's better, because just because it's me. That's who I am. I'm different to, to the other managers that have been here and I'll do things my way. And the more, you know, the more we have people have a buy-in with that, the, the quicker we'll get to where we want to because the, when there is resistance, it just slows the process down. But what I've made clear is it won't change the process. It won't change where we're going. It won't change me. It won't change the way we do things. It will just maybe derail it for a little bit and... And he won't derail it for long because I won't allow it. So the more, the quicker they sort of jump on the train, you know, the quicker we'll get to our destination. So that's been my message. And, and, and again, allowing people to sort of be themselves as much as possible because, you know, when somebody new comes in the building, you know, I don't want people to sort of be that uptight that I don't see the real them. And I try and hopefully put people at ease so they can be themselves and then we can sort of create the kind of environment that hopefully um, allows us to, to do what we need to do. Okay, Roman, I'll finish the section with you, please. Hi, Andy, just one comment on a few more things. Thank you. Um, you were speaking about a 12 month start, and we are confident in this football, we are in hope for this football, we are confident in this football, and you can see it in your team. What would have been better for you to have done? Um, gee, you painted a pretty bleak picture there. Um, <laughs> uh, I was excited about this role. Um, <laughs> I think, but to be fair, without sort of being dismissive of it, that's that's why I'm here. That's what I love about it, is that all that is not here, and that's what I want to bring. I want to bring success to this football club. I want to bring European football to this football club. I want it to be where it deserves to be. And, you know, that's as much as, you know, the the the, the excitement around, you know, joining a, a massive football club in, in the best competition in the world was attractive to me. The biggest thing about it was that there's an enormous challenge here. I love that. That's what I've done my whole career. You know, every club I've taken over, I've taken over after it's had a, a disappointing season or disappointing seasons. Because I think, for me, that's the thing that I've cherished most, in my, most of my career is to do things that will last, make a difference to create something that hopefully stays beyond my tenure because I won't be here forever. So that, um, you know, the, the kind of scenario you painted of where we are at the moment is what attracted me most about this role. What a great challenge, but, you know, what a great story if we get it right. So what does success look like? I think the fans will tell me that. They'll tell me that at the end of the year. <clears throat> well done for you and just in terms of it's the first time you're already stepping into games is, is that one of the you know the biggest motivational factors is that, is that something you can step into the team as a first watch of game one yeah I think I think it's fair to say that uh, I mean that, that that's a fit for who, who I am as a manager and the kind of teams I've produced in the past because I've, I've had a lot of success in my career, but it's also been done on the back of playing a certain way. And I, I, I dare to say that, you know, probably part of the, 
one of the biggest factors for the club appointing me was because they saw that and that's what they want. So that's what I'm going to try and deliver. And uh, and as you said, I think that that's that seems to be the right fit for this club in terms of it, the fans' expectations. You know, they they like to see their teams. You know what we call entertainment, but also you know win games of football, score goals, be exciting. You know, they don't, I don't think they want to see their, their team sort of you know sitting back. I mean that. You know, the, there are, you know, there are different ways of doing that, but the intent for us will be to to try and make sure that we make this football club a compelling watch for everybody. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a bit it's a the bit I love the best. I've said it in the past that you know. I've been fortunate because I've had success, but whenever I reflect on every sort of job I've had, it's not the su success that I kind of look back on and reflect on, it's the build that I reflect on. Because at that time, you know that it's not going to be smooth. Um, there are going to be plenty of doubters, and you know that's that's when your belief and resolve gets tested, not just for me personally, but for the whole, you know, the whole club, the whole group. And I love working through that, you know, and getting out the other side. I, I really enjoy it. And like I said, that was the biggest attraction for me in, in this position was, you know, aside from it being, like I said, a massive football club and, a, and the premier competition in the world was an opportunity to to do something that people will see as, you know, uh, in many respects, um, insurmountable. I love that. I th I, I, yeah, you know, I think, again, I don't think in those terms, but there's no doubt for me that, and I think Harry would say it himself, is he wants his team to be successful, and he's been very, very successful individually for a long time, pretty much since he first started at this football club. And yet the club hasn't had success, so he'd be the first one to say that we need to have a strong team. And that's, why my f that's where my focus is, to build a team that, you know, will, will reflect the same sort of individual excellence that he's had within a team context. So, you know, I'm certainly big on, on you know, team ethos and, and making sure that, you know, that we, we need a strong unit if we're going to be successful. And I'm sure Harry will be the first to, 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 to vouch that that needs to be the case. No, look, if I say it's annoying me, I, I you know, I, no, be, be a misleading but I, it doesn't register. I, I'm not, you know, unless, I, I always believe that you, you, you're much better sort of trying to understand what a situation is through your own eyes. And, and for me, it's, in my head right now, Harry's on holiday, he's lying on a sunbed and, you know, playing with his family and having a great time. That's the picture I've got. Now, if, if other things are going on, I'm not going to think about them. And, and uh, you know, the reason I don't is because he'll be here in two days' time and everything I need to know will be sitting right in front of me. So in the meantime, I'm not going to sort of lose time or sleep on, on sort of what conjecture there may or may not be out there. Some of it, because then you're jumping at shadows, how much of it is true, how much of it is not true. Um, nothing's landed on my desk at this moment from anybody at the club that says that, no, there's a decision to be made there, not even close to that. So, because of that, I'm, like I said, I'm, you know, I'm looking forward to, to having Harry here on on sort of Wednesday and uh, and getting ready for the for the tour. Yeah. And look. <laughs> Respect of my desires, I'm sure you guys will make sure it does. So, um, again, it's something I have no control over. So, what what I need to deal with is, and what I will deal with is, as I have with it in the past, is again what I see day to day. Is it affecting the group? Is it affecting Harry? That that's the only time it'll kind of maybe register. It won't affect me. I'll, I'll come in here every week and I'll 
try and answer the questions as best as I can, but um, that'll be the barometer. And right now I don't have that barometer because he's not even here yet. So that'll tell me, you know, whether that's becoming an issue or not. And, and you know, I, I doubt somebody, you know, like Harry would let it affect him uh, in any sort of way because this football club means too much to him and he wouldn't let it infiltrate the dressing room. So I guess... Um, it's how we react as a football club. It's going to be important, and they'll get tested, mate, for sure. Yeah, plenty. Because um, yeah, I've said a few times that if if you do grow up on the other side of the world, you kind of you don't have it on your doorstep, so anything you could get, and for the most part for us, it was, you know, the Premier League or the English First Division back when I was growing up, and, uh, you know, I remember Ricky Villa and Ozzy Adilis, absolutely, and I remember that FA Cup final, absolutely, because I was, that was, they were my best childhood memories, I've said before, because I was, that was probably me and my dad, 2am, you know, and that's me as a young boy, sitting on a couch watching a game of football, so, plenty of Tottenham teams, uh, you know, Glenn Hoddle's an absolute master and, and those kind of players, you know, resonated around the world, you know. Sometimes I know it's hard for you guys to understand that because it's you've had it, you know, right in front of you your whole your whole lives. But when you're living on the other side of the world, it's a real investment, you know, <laughs> you, to, to get up in the middle of the night and, 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 and it stays with you. You know, those kind of things stays with you. And there's plenty of, you know, teams through that era and, and players, Tottenham players that have uh, definitely... Uh, I have strong memories of in, in my childhood. Charlie. How much help and support has Pep Guardiola given you? Pep Guardiola? Um, <laughs> well, he's spoken, he spoken names about him, but in growing terms of saying how he's been there and how he's been Yeah, yeah I'm, and, and very gracious of him, but I think I've, I've probably spent... 20 minutes in his company, mate, so, and I've never spoken to him otherwise, so, um, but if you're asking me, you know, he's going to go down as one of the greatest managers of all time, he's had an unbelievable influence on the game of football, and all of us involved in it, uh, whether it's, you know, um, consciously or unconsciously been influenced by him, absolutely, um, you know, what, a, what an unbelievable manager, you know, and, uh, um, but you can check my phone, mate. He's not in there. I, can, I, I, I don't have him as Pep, you know, to, to call up. Yeah, that's right. That's when I met him. Yeah, and, it was, and he was great. He's very generous. And look, most of the, you know, most of the top managers. I mean, I, I you know, I tell people I, I, I coached against Sir Alex Ferguson in, in 2000 in Brazil, you know, and and we, we did a press conference together, and he, he gave me 15 minutes of his time, mate. It was gold for me. I was only sort of, you know, I think I was 34 at the time, and and you know, I was coaching a team from Australia and playing against me and you in the Club World Cup and he spent 10, 15 minutes that were gold for me, you know. So, you know, all, I think all the great managers and, and, you know, the great people in this world, they have that trademark of being generous and, um, and you know, when I came across Pep in, 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 in Japan, he was, he was, you know, generous with his time and, uh, you know, you know look, those kind of things always are, you know, you don't want to, you know, there are people who you admire from afar and, there are plenty that after I met them, I wish I hadn't, but, you know, no, no, no but, uh, um, you know, but he's not one of them, you know, and, and it's kind of been a guiding principle in my life. I don't want anyone to sort of walk away disappointed if they've had a chat to me. Um, so you, you kind of want to be kind with your time, and he, he certainly was. Liam. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, my my wife and my kids loved it up there, and like I said, they, you know, my whole family was really happy. But we also, you know, I've got two young ones, and and they've lived abroad their whole life, and now four different countries. So we we kind of made a decision as a family that, you know, wherever sort of my profession took us, we'd go and we'd experience that, and and you know. 
my wife knows better than anyone that I can't resist the challenge. That's when I'm at my best and I, I don't, you know, my history is I've, I've never stayed too long at too many clubs, you know. I've always left when clubs are successful and all I've tried to do wherever I've been is, you know, like most managers, I guess, you try and leave the club you've you've kind of inherited in a better place than when you picked it up and, and you know, like I said, hopefully um, make a positive impact and, you know, it, it was a tough decision for sure, but... but it was a tough decision to leave the Australian national team before a World Cup. It was tough to leave, you know, Yokohama after, you know, winning the championship there. You know, you establish relationships with people. They're always tough decisions, but um, for me, you know, I've always gone with my gut with these things. And, and like I said, I, I, I know when I'm at my best. And when I'm at my best is when the challenge is the biggest. And I thought this was a challenge that kind of would 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 fit all of the things that I'm looking for in the next step. Yeah, what was the impact of <coughs> you and the rest of the family? Yeah. It just comes down, like I said, to 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 where I felt, you know, the biggest the biggest challenge you know, was there for me, you know. And um, I, I've I've always tried to you know I for me to, to come from where I've come from to be sitting here today, I needed to have that instinct inside me to know when to move on because I've had to be faultless in my career to get to this point because like no one's going to rate an Australian manager, are they? So if I'd had any sort of failures, significant failures along the way, I was never going to get here. Part of that process has been to me to know that you know I, I need to keep moving to be at my best and... and and, you know, I, yes, there, there's always challenges at every club you're at. You know, every club I've been at that I've left or even the national team, I could have, there was more challenges, but there are always challenges, always. You know, even if I stayed at a club for five years, I'd never be satisfied that where we're at, well, I'll be looking to improve all the time. So that's not the key factor for me. The key factor for me was that there was a, an opportunity here to, to, again, make an impact at a football club, which I've tried to do at every club I've been. He's absolutely the right man, mate. He's, he's he's a fantastic manager, and he loves that football club. He was he was constantly messaging me while I was a Celtic manager to make sure that I, I stayed on track and we had success. And uh, yeah, I, I've exchanged messages with him. He's been, you know, he, look. To be fair, when I when I got the role, he he was very very supportive at the start, and uh, you know, um, you know, even when I got this role, he, he you know, sent me a nice message, and I've I've kind of reciprocated with that and, and stayed in contact with him and all the staff there and uh, like I said I've got no doubt they'll, they'll have great success and, and hopefully make an impact in Champions League I know that's what his ambition is and um, and the, that group of players and that staff um, certainly uh, have the capabilities of doing that so uh, hopefully that, that, that happens well, Thank you mate We've got time for just a couple more Tom Again, I'm not going to try and limit us to win. Um, all I know is that I love winning. I don't do any job unless I think I can win. Uh, and I think that the, the club I'm with can win. So that, that's going to be my intent. Now, I also have a real strong belief in the way that should happen. And that is the way we play, the way we train, I said the way we behave, all these kind of things. They're, that's the first bit. You can, if you. If you focus on the winning, I mean, the strong desire to win exists in everybody. There isn't a football club in the world that doesn't want to win. That does It's not going to make you any different from your opponent on a weekly basis. But the real successful teams, that's underpinned by something stronger, and that is something in within that organisation that makes them winners beyond just wanting to win. So you can't just say, well, we want to win, we're desperate to win. Everyone wants to win. Everyone is desperate. But what's going to get you there? And that's where I come in because I believe the football we will play and, and the way we'll go about it will give us an opportunity to do that. And that's what I'm going to focus on. Get us to play the football we want, train the way we want, 
get the players in that we need, the people in that we need to, to get us to that, that point. And then that'll give us the opportunity to have that success. But, you know, just, just wanting to win is, is not enough in anything. Um, look, maybe I, I guess you'd have to ask the people who made the decision, but I, I, I don't think there's a shortcut to success. I, I doubt that Antonio or Jose would say that, you know, all their success has been hard-earned, you know. Any success, like I said, any success you have, if people think it's just a matter of plugging in something special and that happens, um, it's not how it works. And uh, um, in terms of me, as I said, I've, I've got this process that, that I go through with every club I've been and the way we... We go about things, and and it'll start with the way we play. You know, that's that's good. that's everything for me. The way we play is everything, because that's where you you, you garner the belief that you could do something. You know, it's got to be, it's got to have a basis in something. It can't just be that we want to win, or you know that we need one more player to be winners or one manager to be a winner. I just don't believe in that. I just think you need to have something more substantial and. and to, to fall back on than that, and that's that's what I do because it's quite obvious that um, there wouldn't be many on this planet that believe that I'm the on just bringing me in is going to bring us success. That's not going to happen. I mean, what's going to bring us success is if we, you know, like I said, we 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 start building some really strong foundations in the kind of football we want to play. Yeah, it will be. I, you know, my philosophy, sort of my philosophy, I hate using buzzwords, but on, on culture is, it, it, to me, it's just people. You know, it's people who define an environment. It's very easy for me to come in and say, look, this is what I want the culture to look like, and I've got people that don't fit in it, don't have the personality or the characteristics or the behaviour. So that's the first thing you've got to understand is what kind of people we have. And, you know, um, the values that I hold dear, I think, uh, are are reflective in a lot of the values that this football club have in terms of ideology around playing the way you play football, but also, you know, my my sort of um, basis for for culture or behaviour is just, you know, we're all very fortunate to do what we do. There isn't a person who comes through these gates should, they shouldn't come through with a smile on their face, particularly the footballers and, and us. Um, so it starts there, you know. If, you, if you've got an appreciation and a respect for, for your environment and the people there, then I think that, again, gives you a good chance to, to create something, you know. If, and, and sometimes people need direction with that, you know. If, if there's no clear direction or clarity around what that's supposed to look like, then, you know, people can go off and do their own thing. I understand that. But, I, you know, I, I have been and I will be pretty clear about my expectations around, you know, what I what I think we need to be, you know, be like as a, as a group, a group of players, a group of staff, a group, you know, as, as a football club. And I don't think that's too far from the kind of things that Harry was talking about. And in terms of style, you said aggressive and dominant. I think it's fair to say that under the last three coaches, Fred hasn't really played that way. It's been more kind of counter-punching, which seemed quite thrilling, but there's been quite a lot kind of sitting back and there's been a lot of pressure. Is, is it harder? Yeah, absolutely, and and that'll be that'll be the biggest challenge, and it's why I'm sort of that's what I'm concentrating on at the moment. Is you know we don't obviously have the whole group here, but even with the guys we have here, it's just about changing that mindset a little bit and um, and, and changing you know the kind of way players see the game and, and maybe their roles within it, because you know even even the positions they play, there's going to be adjustments to the way I, I want them to do things. So. Um, but again, I love that. That's that's why I'm here. You know, if it was kind of me just rolling up and you know them going out there and doing their thing, it, it wouldn't excite me. So you know, that's part of the challenge. That it will be a, a bit of a shift from what the way the club's played the last sort of three, four years, and um, you know how quickly the players embrace that and 
and the new players coming in will help because, you know, that's the part that, you know, we have control or I have control over, you know, whether that's, you know, you know James Madison or, or Guillermo and Goal. I mean, they're players who I think will fit in the direction we want to go to, which, which helps. And then it's about seeing, you know, the existing group, you know, how many of them sort of are able to adjust and embrace the, the way we're going to play. Yeah, look, I think, um, you know, really excited to get him, you know, as part of the group. He's, you know, I think any manager will tell you that, um, you know, part of the key to, to trying to be a dominant team is to have, you know, multiple attacking threats and having a midfielder who can score goals create. Um, they're not easy to come by and he's proved himself at that level um, in the last you know, few years as, as somebody who can do that and I think... Um, you know, even, even just at the outset, when you look at Tottenham in the last few years, it's been really reliant on sort of the front three to, to get most of their goals. And um, I thought it was a, a real good fit for us to look for a player like James and even better if we could get James. So we ended up getting James. So, um, you know, it was, um, you know, I was really pleased. That, and, and the fact that we did it early was great because it allows him now, you know, he's had a break. He's had a birth of twins, so, mate, I don't know what shape he'll be in when he gets here. But, um, you know, once we get him in, it means he can come on the tour with us. And I know he's really excited about joining the group. He obviously knows a few of the lads. but And I think he's in a stage of his career where he feels like he can be, you know, a leader in that context. And I think that that's great as well because we're going to need, you know, players who want to embrace that responsibility within this group, whether that's their first year in or they've been here for ages, is that we're going to need some leadership on the field and I think he feels like he can he can be a, a player that does that. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thanks, Thanks everybody. Thank you.